Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's fundamental and technical supply and demand for its and gold analysis. And if you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And I hope you all had a great New Year's break and uh, are ready for 2024. And the markets are back. So looking at the week ahead, starting. The 8th of January in the United States, the main focus will be on the December inflation rates, followed by foreign trade and producer prices and speeches by Fed officials. The uh, inflation rate is really going to be the main um, data point that is going to be focused on because that will really kind of determine when um, the Federal Reserve are likely to cut interest rates, whether March or some uh, analysts, a lot of analysts are thinking now that the market's got ahead of itself and that they could start to uh, cut in May at the earliest. Also, Switzerland and Australia will unveil this, their CPI figures. It will be a busy week in China where the calendar includes consumer and producer inflation and foreign trade data. Germany will share insights into factory orders, industrial production and export and imports. The United Kingdom will showcase November's GDP report and growth and industrial production figures. And lastly, investors will keep an eye on unemployment rates in the euro area. So sorry, that's what we've got coming up this uh, this week and so getting into some of the uh, technicals and some more fundamentals and looking at the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of uh, the dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro the uh, the yen and the pound so looking at where we are on the daily and um we had some news on friday which was non-farm payrolls and so let me just move this uh, slightly over and um yeah so uh with not, when it comes to non-farm payrolls and um and uh, unemployment as well as wage growth uh, there were some good numbers so the u.s jobs report uh suggests no pressing need for the fed to cut rates and so um it's important to understand that the likelihood or the closer the Fed or any central bank is to uh, cutting rates is the more the uh, currency will weaken. So <clears throat> it's really about um, central banks on the leading and lagging uh, end of uh, their uh, interest rate cutting cycle. And uh, in the top right hand side, you can click on the video and I really kind of go over and explain really the strategy, the fundamental strategy of brown leading and lagging interest rates. And so the good report um, from the US, pretty much uh, uh, the market is now pricing out rate cuts in in as soon as March. So solid employment gains, low unemployment and sticky wages suggest no imminent need for Federal Reserve rate cuts. Nonetheless, the jobs market is cooling and the concentration of employment gains in sectors viewed historically as being lower paid and more part time raises some concerns. So it's not necessarily all, you know, a bed of roses. So we think the Fed will wait until May before cutting rates. And so that if that is true in the market consensus, uh, you know, does think the same thing, then um, you're likely to see uh, the dollar actually continue to be supported. So um, there could be a pullback this week. And if there is a pullback this week, I personally am looking at some buy trades. And so uh, on the dollar index, and you're not necessarily trading the dollar index, you're just looking at this as, as in terms of uh, overall dollar value. So if we understand that this is an expensive area up at these highs, uh, and this was the most recent low, yeah, then um, we are at highs, which is more of the expensive area. So what I'm looking for is either a pullback into at least the daily demand zone for some confluence, or looking for if prices continue to move higher, yeah, then waiting for a pullback into what would be a created new demand zone, which is good, which would be right here, and then look for a buy trade to buy the dollar against what I would consider a weaker currency. So 
that's where we are right now in terms of some also some confluence within this area um, you've also got a level of support and resistance uh, that has also it's also being traded so it's a really nice level but from a decision you know where, where we're going from here in the short term nobody really knows but you have a plan for you know any eventuality but the key is really understanding where uh, the fundamentals are taking you so if you understand that prices are coming down but you think that the dollar is still a buy then you're looking to buy for cheap right that's really how it works so um, try and avoid buying the expensive levels or at highs right or selling at lows or shorting at lows so that's where we are with the uh, with the dollar also as well one of the things to kind of look out for is uh, Red Sea attacks bring risk of higher prices for Americans, Biden officials warn. So um, you've got inflation remains political liability for Biden re-election bid and officials say that uh, say they see little impact on energy prices so far. So um, with the uh, with the um, you know issues surrounding you know the Red Sea, um, your, you know, and, and attacks on the the, um, the ships that is r potentially raising um, costs for the shippers, and so you're going, you know, we could likely see inflation rise as certain costs are passed on to, um, you know, the uh, consumer, right? And so uh, that is something to kind of keep an eye on um, in terms of inflation numbers. So let's see what happens there. Um, so moving on to the uh, the dollar yen and the dollar yen uh, again this week we did have prices kind of come up to this uh, supply zone now again if you're looking to buy the um, the yen then this would be a decent area to look to buy the yen now I do think the yen is a buy in 2023 but um, currently there seems to be a bit of a pullback uh, in terms of the expectation for when the Bank of Japan is looking to hike rates. And so there was some talk about the Bank of Japan potentially looking to hike or, or uh, implement some uh, um, policies like yield curve control and ending yield curve control, which would likely um, strengthen the currency. But that is uh, probably being taken off the table now due to the recent earthquake as well um, in uh, Japan. So it says here more Bank of Japan watches shift hike forecast seeing January unlikely. So more Bank of Japan watches joined those pushing back their predictions for the end of negative rates in the wake of the New Year's Day earthquake and recent remarks by Governor Kazuo Ueda. And so you don't necessarily want to um, high rates when you've just had a bit of an economic disaster so um also as well the economy isn't doing fantastic so i do think that although they are looking to high rates it's just a matter of when and the timing so um you know most analysts expect april at the absolute earliest so i think for now there is scope for the for the Bank of Japan to potentially weaken a bit further, but I think going into the uh, second quarter, or at least going at the end of this first quarter, going into maybe February, um, we should see the yen look to uh, strengthen a bit more as we get more data and uh, uh, I guess a closer decision as to whether the Bank of Japan will uh, hike rates or not. And the Bank of Japan are really the only bank, central bank, that has seen hiking rates um, out of the uh, uh, currencies that we trade. So um, <clears throat> I do think the uh, the dollar is looking like a potential buy anyway. And so um, against the yen at the moment, I think the timing might be a bit difficult to kind of sell the dollar and buy the yen. Um, I think my uh, more high probability of trade would be if prices do come down to any you know demand zone and they're looking for buys here if you are looking for shorts then um i think anywhere in this zone is okay but probably a bit further up might be a bit more advantageous you've probably got something like uh this zone here to look for in terms of um in terms of uh uh, trade to the short side also from a support and resistance
perspective, you also have this area here where you know basically it's been traded as resistance, bit of resistance there, support, support, bit of resistance. So there's a decent area right in that uh, 147.50s uh, area to look for some short trades if this supply zone doesn't work out. And again, it's really about understanding um, the, uh, the impact of rate uh, uh, cuts and hikes on uh, currency and uh, I think medium to long term I would be bearish on this currency but I think in the short term the next uh, maybe month or so this is more a bit more of a difficult um, uh, uh, buy in terms of uh, buying the Japanese yen against the US uh, dollar for now uh, moving on to the um, dollar CAD and so the Canadian dollar did have some news as well on Friday. There was some mixed news, um, which wasn't necessarily great for the Canadian dollar. And so, uh, for me, uh, looking at this pair, I would still have the bias of actually looking to buy um, on pullbacks. And so, in fact, I would say this is uh, hidden demand. And so, you've got more of a pullback I think if prices can do that then that I think is going to be a great buy if you're looking at um, again uh, uh, buyers on the dollar you're either looking for pullbacks or you're looking for a move higher uh, to prove that there is uh, some demand there proof of uh, proof of value and then a pullback into what would be a demand zone there before looking at getting long if you are looking for short trades and think that the Canadian dollar are looking to um, uh, strengthen over the US dollar, then you're looking at shorts probably right now. Now, um, in the uh, private mentoring group, we looked at the probabilities <clears throat> of a rate uh, cut from the uh, from the Canadian uh, Bank of Canada, and it looks like there's an 81% chance of a uh, rate cut currently uh, by the Bank of Japan in March, whereas the US, I think it's, it's a lot less. So let's go to the US, I think in, in March, it looks like a 66% uh, chance of an ease, so March's data, and whereas in uh, the, uh, for the um, Canadian dollar, the market is pricing in an 81% chance, and so, uh, just looking at you know that data alone, you would think that the um, the, uh, the 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 dollar really should be the trade, the currency to buy. So, of course, data can change, and uh, depends on what happens with uh, the economy and inflation. But as long as the data supports the narrative, my bias would be more to buy the dollar CAD than uh, than short. Um, so that's where we are with that. Looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar, the pound has been a bit of a mixed bag. And before we get into the uh, the pound dollar, I just want to remind everybody that um, on uh, Monday the 8th, um, I am opening up and reopening the, the uh, Trading 180 mentoring. So if you do want to join, and really apply these fundamental uh, strategies to your technical analysis strategies, then um, I will be opening mentoring for about a week. So from maybe the 8th of January until maybe the, the, the 10th or the 11th of January. And then I'll be closed again for uh, the foreseeable future. Um, and so in Trading 180, we do have a mixture of fundamental uh, our approach is really uh, applying fundamental analysis, uh, looking at inflation, interest rates, business cycle, monetary policies, and risk sentiment, and applying that with technical analysis. So we fit right in the middle. So if you are uh, interested in getting mentoring for myself and really understanding fundamentals to a very high level and joining the Discord group, and um, we have a great uh, bunch of traders who are really killing it at the moment, and so um, this is, uh, you know, some of the data and the analysis that we were doing on Friday, plenty of conversations, plenty of analysis going on. And so uh, <clears throat> you're not going to be, you know, alone 
all the traders in here, very friendly, very supportive. And you also get access to um, the members trading videos. And uh, you can see here, we, I do record members videos that are not released uh, to the uh, to the YouTubes. And so uh, lots and lots of videos in here. In fact, uh, hundreds, you've got years worth of videos in here. I could keep going back for forever. There's probably thousands of videos on this playlist and that you can go back and check out and all, um, you know, from trade setups to fundamental analysis, um, you know, everything I know is in, you know, pretty much uh, in this, in these channels. So if you do want access to it, go to the uh, uh, Trading 180 website and uh, check that out and it'll be open for a limited time only. So going back to the uh, pound dollar and looking at the, uh, the, um, where we are in terms of technicals. So you've got really this uh, this area here where you've got higher highs being made, right? So you've got high, low, and then you've got a high. So price is putting back to this higher low is where really the strongest area of demand should be, or the first area that you wanna to look towards. So you can see where prices did bounce off of that demand zone around now on the daily. Right, and then you've got a second one uh, right here as well. So, um, uh, yeah, that's if you're looking to buy the uh, the um, the pound. For me, though, I'm not really looking to buy the pound. I think the dollar, hopefully, according to the data, should be um, the uh, the trade. But let's see what happens this week, as we do have um, the. GDP month for month, you know, for the uh, for the pound, and if that does come out as expected, it says forecasted. Uh, the previous was minus zero point three, and if it comes out anywhere, you know, at the zero point two or above, then in fact, I think the pound may start to rally. But anything below that, then I think the um, the uh, the pound may start to actually fall against the dollar. And again, from a um, uh, looking at Bloomberg, the UK economist upgrade outlook with Bank of England seen cutting rates in May. So Goldman and Bloomberg uh, uh, economists predict stronger uh, 2024 growth and improved prospects in second half set um, second half set stage for UK elections. So, in fact, the uh, Goldman Sachs and Bloomberg actually think that the UK economy could start to grow, whereas um, I think a lot of other economists think that the um, the Bank of England could start to cut a bit sooner. <clears throat> so again, some mixed signals going on there. So when you have mixed signals, typically prices end up in what is known as a range or an auction sideways moving market. Um, not necessarily the clearest pair to trade at the moment, but if you are looking at buying the uh, the dollar against the pounds, then I think any moves around these uh, one to eight round numbers is gonna be nice. Um, but if you are looking to buy the uh, the pound, <clears throat> any pullbacks into a demand zone or lower should be a decent move to the uh, to the upside. But I think that all kind of depends this week upon not only the GDP month for month, but also as well you've got core inflation data as well. I mean, if core inflation remains sticky for the dollar, then um, in fact I think the dollar could start to. <clears throat> um, strengthen even more simply because it pushes back expectations for rate uh, cuts in uh, in March. So that's where we are with the uh, pound dollar. Looking at the pound yen, and again, the uh, decision week really is going to be uh, you know not only. Uh, from a yen perspective, consumer confidence. And I think consumer confidence is, is gonna be, you know, uh, any kind of market mover, but it's more, the market's probably looking more towards GDP month for month for the UK. So it's at a really nice level, but this level has been touched several times and the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. And so there could be the opportunity for a bit of a stop hunt above that level. Um, and again, if that coincides maybe with some uh, some disappointing data for the UK, then in fact, that's gonna be a really nice technical trade uh, from a buying perspective, if you are looking to buy the uh, the pound. 
uh, sorry, this trade was basically if you're buying the yen, right? If you're buying the yen, you're, then you're shorting. If you're buying the pound, then you're looking at um, uh, any kind of moves all the way back down to this so 17950 area to look for any kind of buy trades. So um, moving on to the um, the euro dollar and the euro dollar. Um, although again we had some decent news for the uh, the dollar prices were um, you know kind of just created this indecision candle a doji candle um, I think the market is now probably looking more towards the core inflation data to be sure as to whether prices are looking to either you know move to the downside in terms of dollar strength or in fact dollar weakness back up to maybe these uh, these recent highs and so um, for me, I am actually in a short trade from all the way up at these highs, and so uh, I'll talk about that probably after the video. Um, and yeah, let's uh, see what happens. But technically, right, we've got that as a demand zone, uh, and then we've got this as a supply right up here. Um, the euro at the moment, I just don't, I can't see myself being a buyer of the euro at the moment. Um, although there was some inflation news that, you know, was seen to be positive um, in terms of rate uh, cuts and euro area inflation picks up again as energy aid is removed. And it says here the ECB expects price gains to slow more gradually this year. And so inflation did pick up um, a little bit, which, you know, you would expect uh, the ECB to probably start to, um, you know, hold for longer. But it says here that investors have nevertheless piled into bets that the ECB will start lowering interest rates sooner than mid-2024, a point some officials have identified as the earliest possibility. So um, I believe that the, um, the ECB are likely to um, end up cutting rates probably... Uh, at least around the same time as the Fed. Uh, that's what I would expect. And if the Fed do cut before the um, the euro, I'll, I'll, I'll be quite surprised. Um, but then you do have the election cycle for the dollar. So, um, you know, that's really going to be a catalyst for, for rate cuts. But let's see what happens. I think in the short term, the dollar still is the, uh, the ultimate buy. So I think any pullbacks are definitely buying opportunities. Of course, it depends on... The, uh, the data supporting that narrative. But if you do want to be a buyer of the euro, I think now is a decent time to look for buy trades. If you are looking at um, uh, uh, sell trades uh, on the euro dollar, then any pullbacks into this area is going to be decent for a short trade. Looking now at the, um, the euro yen, and the euro yen, I think, is a sell. And so looking at where we are in terms of supply and demand. You've got these areas here as far as buys. But um, saying to the guys in the group that I might look to enter into uh, this uh, this trade, the only thing I don't like at the moment is that it's just that the, uh, the yen might be just a little bit weak fundamentally, but I think it's a decent trade uh, technically to look for a, uh, a short trade. Of course, this isn't financial advice, but I think that in terms of risk reward, this is uh, really, really nice. And um, let's see what happens there. If not, then the next area to look for, you know, short trades, if that trade doesn't work out, is going to be really up at these highs in terms of uh, daily supply and demand zones. Also as well, just as a bit of confluence, you do have this area here as a level of support and resistance so uh, you know uh, the institutions have been definitely trading this level yeah level resistance resistance bit of support and stop hunting up above these highs and again you can start to see that's where business has been done so very interested in this area uh, for a short and if i'm going to buy the yen it's going to be against uh, the euro so again let's see what happens there um, you've got the euro pound and the pound does look like it should be the, the, the stronger out of the two as they are expected to hike uh, later than the than the ECB and so 
in terms of uh, directional bias, I would likely go for um, any you know short trades. That'd be my uh, my bias to buy the um, the pound. So although we do have in fact a uh, some supply here, I think the best area to look for any kind of uh, short trades in terms of buying the pound will be up at this area here. If there is a reversal of fortunes, then um, in fact there is some demand that kind of starts around here where we are. And when you get quite a wide zone of, uh, of demand, it's good to look for, you know, um, areas of uh, support and resistance, whether that be, you know, horizontal or diagonal. And you can see here, probably around here, that there is a, a level of uh, probably around that. Bring us down a bit, yeah. You can see where there's a bit of uh, support and resistance where prices on the daily, you know, hit that level there. And then it's been resistance, resistance, then support. So potentially you could see prices now start to bounce off of that area or at least down at these lows. So as if you want to be a buyer of the euro against the pound, but I personally wouldn't look for that direction I'm looking for. I'd look for um, uh, the other way. So uh, buying the pound against the euro. But again, it does depend upon uh, what happens this week. Now the euro again has... Uh, balance of trade and then there is also inflation as well so let's see what happens with that looking now at the Australian dollar US dollar and I think the Australian dollar is probably one of the strongest currencies uh, currently they also have some data uh, coming out which is a CPI but it also um, it's not necessarily uh, showing on the uh, on trading view at the moment it just says balance of trade but I think if CPI remains sticky for Australia then you should get in fact I think a move higher simply because the central bank are likely to hike rates if we get CPI comes in lower then you're likely to see something like this but again um, I think that this in terms of directional bias uh, we'd have to wait for the data to come out and then look for any kind of buyers, buy or sell trades. But um, if I'm buying the Australian dollar, it wouldn't necessarily be against the US dollar at the moment because I do think the US dollar is probably likely to appreciate, uh, at least in the short term. But uh, into the second half of the year, or at least towards the end of the first half of the year, I think I'll be looking for more dollar shorts and US dollar shorts and more Australian dollar buys. And going into gold, gold, um, again, I think this year should be gold's year if the pretty much the economy is going into and the world global economy is going into um, a recession, right? So you've got, you know, the UK heading into a recession potential, Europe, the US, uh, you know, talking about, you know, a, a soft landing, but could be bumpy in terms of, um you know, their economy then, and with all central banks looking to cut rates, I do think that gold should be, you know, a buy ultimately. So whether prices, you know, come down to, you know, where we are now, and that could be a decent area to look for buy trades, or if we're looking further out and maybe prices come back down to the 1970s, down to maybe the 1930s, I think that's going to be a very nice uh, uh, price to look for uh, buying gold. So, um, but with dollar strength at the moment, or the potential for dollar strength over the next, you know, couple of weeks, um, I think gold's going to be probably a, a tougher buy, right? A, quite a tough buy. So let's see what happens with um, with gold and trading gold at the moment. But in terms of investing, then any pullbacks are really uh, nice uh, buys. So. Yeah, that's it for this week in terms of um, the analysis. And let's get into the euro dollar trade that I took um, uh, over the uh, holiday break. So this is a trade breakdown on the euro dollar. And I took this on the uh, 28th of uh, December during the, uh, the holiday season. And so in fact, that should be uh, supply, not demand. So, yeah, uh, the reason why I took it um, was 
that we had some confluences. Some of the confluences were pretty much that you had a supply zone there. Also had sort of level, a level, key level of uh, resistance here, and the fact that you know it's been traded here. Banks were doing a lot of business in this area. I had been historically doing a lot of business in this area. You can, if you pull this back even more, you can see that, yep, historically banks tend to buy and sell in this zone. So um, looking at that brilliant zone, supply zone, uh, support and resistance. And so uh, when prices came up to here, again, we're not just looking to, you know, willy nilly start trading this in terms of uh, uh, just placing and pending orders. I'm looking for, uh, you know, some, um, uh, some candlestick entries. And so, you know, going down to like the lower time frames. And then I saw an entry at this area here. Yeah, it was the 107, one, sorry, 11073 uh, area. So um, this, at the close of that candle, uh, I entered. And then also as well, I had about a 20 pip stop, something about that <clears throat> above the level. And then um, it was literally that. That was it, right? Now, uh, many of the guys in the uh, Discord group also know that I enter multiple positions if the market gives me uh, the opportunity to. And so what I did was I um, entered in at a 50% retracement. Now, I'm not guaranteed to get the 50% retracement, but what I did is I set a pending order. So it allows me to um, you know, get a better price if prices pull back, right? So from that perspective, that's what happened. And I was, you know, fortunate enough on this trade to be able to get a better price. Yeah. So that was really what I was looking for. And prices managed to come back to that area there. So, um, so yep, yeah, that was that. And then you have, you know, 0.1%, you know, 0.2% uh, uh, on that and then 0.3% on the 50, the 100% retracement, right? So if prices actually pull back to 100%, I'm entering at 0.3. Now on this one, um, prices only managed to trigger me into two positions. And so, uh, you know, that one there now becomes um, a one-to-one, -one, but because I've entered at 0.2%, uh, now it becomes a profitable trade, right? So there we are, that's where we are. And so that hit a one-to-one, 0.2%. -one, now I'm just trading this 0.1%, you know, as far as I can take it. And I've also as well moved my stop down to um, to way, way below break even. Now I think our stop loss is somewhere around uh, this, around the 110, 40, 45 area. So um, this has now been a profitable trade. But back a little bit but now we've got multiples of uh, of R and I'm hoping to trade this actually down to the 10820s or is it the 30s yeah just above here so the one 10830 will be the area that I'm looking to take the trade so that would probably end up being something like a one second something like a, a 2.84 to 1 on one of them and also as well, I've uh, just banked a one-to-one -one on that. So I can't lose on this trade, even if this pulls back. Um, I've made 0.2% on one of my trades and I just lose basically nothing because I've moved my stop down. But if I didn't move my stop down and kept it where it was and I lost on my second trade, then I would still be up on this trade. So profitable trade. And the reason why I do that is because it makes it easier uh, psychologically to hold trades and so knowing that I can't lose and in fact I'm up so I don't necessarily need to grab or snatch it at trades and I think one of the worst things you can do as a trader is only enter into one position and try to manage that one position um, if you can get in on you know two or three uh, trades and like I said the way that I enter uh, sometimes the market doesn't give you that and you don't necessarily have to enter um, just one position at market and then one position there, you can enter two positions here, right? But either way, you enter, if you can enter multiple positions and then try and take profit at least and get yourself to break even to some degree, then it does make your um, trading psychology uh, a lot easier when holding trades, knowing that you're at break even and all you have to do is basically uh, hold the trade until you know your profit target, right? Wherever that might be. So, yep, that's the uh, the trade. 
breakdown so far I'm in this and again my stop loss is actually below my entry point and so um, again I can't lose I'm always I'm, I'm up on this trade and let's see if it actually rolls over so yeah that's it um, I was in the uh, a, a pound dollar trade and that trade ended up being um, a small win as well so let's see what happens I might depending on what happens this week as well uh, if the fundamentals go in my favor in terms of the uh, the dollar um, core inflation uh, ends up being sticky or um, or come, comes in higher than ex than forecasted then I'll hold if it comes in you know maybe as is or lower then I might consider just taking the rest of my profit off <clears throat> and then move on to the next trade because I don't think the dollar may uh, continue to move uh, lower. But let's see what happens. But that's really the trade breakdown. And uh, yeah, guys, that's it. So I hope you have a great trading week and I will see you in the next video. Take care.